What's up guys, RBG here bringing you another Marvel's Avengers update and this one is more of a recap of the things that were revealed at this year's San Diego Comic Con. It's going to be a busy week for Marvel because they currently have the floor for a lot of reveals at Hall H and when it comes to these kinds of things it means you absolutely have to be there to see what they have planned for future projects. A lot of you guys were upset about Crystal Dynamics choosing to once again show a behind closed doors demonstration of the first mission in Marvel's Avengers, but thankfully we were able to get some info via tweets so we're going to talk about it today. But before we dive into that, I got to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is an awesome game that you can play on the go via iOS and Android phones. It's a turn based RPG title that has been absolutely killing it in the mobile gaming industry, boasting almost 10 million users who've downloaded the game in just 3 months. And why are so many gamers going crazy over this title you ask? How about the fact that it has some of the best graphics you're going to find on a mobile device? or the strategic gameplay you're going to need to conquer those huge boss battles. And I can't forget about the amazing storyline and over 400 champions waiting to be collected and customized by you. My favorite champion to use is the Dark Elf Kale, because he has a sick design and magical moves that can inflict poison as well as deal critical damage to enemies. I can honestly see why the game is growing super fast with all its highly anticipated live updates. There's a new awesome loyalty rewarding program for new players and you get daily login rewards for the first 90 days of playing. And you want to know the best thing about this game? It's absolutely free. So what are you waiting for? Go to the description on this video, click on the special link and you will get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. Good luck and I'll see you on the battlefield. So as you all know, Marvel Entertainment announced that they were holding another secret behind closed doors panel for Marvel's Avengers, and we weren't quite sure exactly what new things they would be unveiling besides the footage we already got at E3. It just so turns out that it was more than we had initially thought, because we actually got an extended version of the E3 demo, and this demo pretty much confirmed most of all the rumors we got in that Reddit leak a month ago. Things like the helicarrier serving as the main hub and a cutscene consisting of a girl that looks to be Kamala Khan validated everything that was mentioned in the leak. One of the most noticeable things would be the updated faces for the characters. If you remember last month, the creative director Sean Sky said that there weren't any plans to change the characters' designs and that they were pretty committed to the design choices. This news didn't quite sit well with a majority of the fans. Either the designs didn't really sell how epic the game would be or they didn't mirror their MCU counterparts so fans were really up in arms about this. Some of you stated that you didn't like the character faces, and admittedly I was one of those fans who shared those complaints. There's no reason that Tony Stark should look like Angry Joe on a keto diet. There's obviously an uncanny valley of realistic and downright wonky looking faces. But if you go back to that interview, Shauna Sky said something that I don't think a lot of you guys picked up on. The level of detail and overall polish of the character models will absolutely continue to improve as we get closer to lunch meaning that they were absolutely going to give the characters a facelift somewhere down the line. As you can see by this before and after photo of the Black Widow, they did that and then some. One of the biggest issues fans had with her model was that her chin was a little abnormal. And admittedly, I didn't notice this at first glance, but after getting repetitive comments saying that she looked like Farquaad from Shrek, I kind of saw where they were coming from. Her chin was definitely pronounced. But as you can see in this updated photo, not only does her face look more proportioned and attractive, her hair seems to have also been given an update. Which is dope because it seemed like the facial and head hair for the characters was another one of those things that made them jarring to look at. Case in point, Thor. This guy got a ton of backlash for how bad his beard looked. The hair just moves awkward and the facial hair looks like it doesn't belong on his face. But it looks like Crystal has since fixed that issue as well. I know I mentioned in my previous video that they were working with a more modified version of their in-house graphics software, the Foundation Engine, so things are still getting tweaked. I posted this update on my community tab and there were a lot of you guys saying that you didn't understand why they bothered updating the looks in the first place, and that they were fine. And I understand that some of you didn't have a problem with the original faces, but there were a good majority of you guys who were flip-flopping. I noticed some of you complaining at first, so I find it funny that you want to turn around and say that they were fine in the first place. I'm just saying. But moving on, the next thing that was revealed were in-game alternate costumes for the Avengers members. And this was absolutely needed to pat out the fires of complaints they were getting from fans regarding the new costumes. 
I was fairly optimistic that we'd be getting other cosmetic upgrades and costumes from some of the other lore like the comics and movies, and one of the first costumes they showed was the classic Joe Fixit costume for the Hulk. And I had a feeling they'd add this one because it's been added in some of the older Hulk games like Ultimate Destruction. In the comics, Bruce would transform into Joe Fixit or the Grey Hulk due to Bruce Banner's dissociative identity disorder. Unlike your traditional savage green Hulk, Joe Fissett is a more cunning and morally ambitious version of the Hulk. He can gain more strength as he gets angrier except it's a lot slower compared to the normal Hulk. Not sure if the suit will just be for aesthetics, but I'm hoping it'll have all his abilities as well as his weaknesses from the comics. But anyways, the next costume they showcased was the Mark 42 Sin Iron Man armor. This suit is made from multiple repulsive cores like the one on Tony Stark's chest. Unlike other Iron Man armors whose pieces have to be assembled from the same exact model, the Mark 42 can basically adapt, utilizing parts from different other suits. And all of it is powered by the Omniversal Multitasking software which Tony got from Rocket Raccoon when he teamed up with the Guardians. Like he could activate the suit to handle certain threats while he was off world. And it could also deploy whips. But moving on, the other suits we got are the classic Captain America scale mail armor, Viking Thor, and a bearded version of the Hulk that looks like he could be from the House of M comics. Hopefully we get to unlock him. There is also a 12 inch statue of Cap created by Gentle Giant Studios and apparently this will be part of the collector's edition. It's basically a color version of the memorial statue we saw in the A-Day trailer. One thing I'll say about this is that for some reason this version of Captain America looks a lot better than the in-game model. Like he looks a lot bulkier and fills out his suit unlike the in-game model that looks like his super soldier physique is buried under all that armor. I'm hoping they beat them up in the actual game because I don't necessarily mind their take on the costume. It just looks a little too boxy for a character like Cap who's known for his heroic physique. But moving on, the creative director says that there will be certain missions designed for specific heroes to fit within the storyline and single player aspects, but many can be played using any hero in your roster. And after the A-Day prologue, the world will open up for you and your base will be a reclaimed helicarrier from which you can launch single player and co-op missions in hotspots around the globe. They also announced that the A-Day demo prologue will be released online after Gamescom in August, stating that it's an extended and updated look at the events of the Faithful Day. So if you pre-ordered the game for the PS4, you can look forward to getting a taste of what the game has to offer in next month's demo. But that's basically all the news I got for you guys today. We got more news than expected and it's awesome that they've already announced some of the alternate costumes we're gonna get. I guess I can kinda let Crystal out the hook for hosting another behind closed doors demo for Marvel's Avengers because as I mentioned, this was a Comic Con event and most of the things shown there tend to be kept under wraps. But what are your thoughts on all this news? Do you think the game is headed in the right direction with some of the facial updates? And do you think Square should reveal more of the game to the public eye? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on my channel. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it on social media outlets with all your friends and followers. Sharing really makes a difference. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.